Hey, thanks for tuning in to The City Considers. We're back here in the Davis Media Access Studio here in Davis, California. I'm your host, Autumn Labbe Renault, and this is a place where we take a few minutes out to talk with our elected officials, our city leaders, and uh, get the scoop on what's going on in our fair burg. Today's guest wears so many hats it boggles the mind. Scientist, advocate, activist, small business owner, mother, grandmother, and now city council member. And by virtue of being the highest vote getter in the recent election, our mayor pro tem and our mayor in two years, I'd like to welcome Gloria Partida. Thank you. Hey, Gloria, thanks for being with us today. Thank La you for having me. Last time you and I did any kind of hanging out was actually on the big day of giving yes. when we were busy organizing uh, what turned into a, that was a big yes. event. Yes, and it was fun. It was and fun. It promoted uh, nonprofits and yeah. uh, built community, which is what I'm all about. So, right. and yeah. it was great to do that with you yeah. and with Davis Media Access. And as founder of the Davis Phoenix Coalition, your organization and Davis Media Access have done some partnering over the mm -hmm. last couple of years, yes. and uh, we we really appreciate your work to promote equity and inclusion throughout the town. It's something you brought um, to bear on your campaign. It's something that I think is going to be a part of all your work mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, and on that note, one of the things in your campaign you spoke about was the importance of including those issues, equity and inclusion, as we look at large-scale planning pro processes. And mm -hmm. by that we mean when we look at housing, when we look at infrastructure and, and development. So now that you're on the dais mm -hmm. and and getting into yes. this how how do we ensure that that actually happens moving forward and and what are the what are some of the things that you're doing so um, I think that when people think about me they think about equity as you said mm -hmm. and social justice because that is what I have um, sort of done uh, most of most of my advocacy around sure. Um, but one of the things that uh, kind of uh, drew me to the public service and to being on city council was that um, I did see an opportunity to promote that uh, citywide. But um, one of the ways that is most interesting to me uh, for doing that is something that I don't think people think about too often, and that is economic development. Okay. So economic development, I think, is really important for us in Davis because I think it's something that we have kind of, uh, being kind of a, a slow growth mm -hmm. city, have uh, shied away from, and it's not something that 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 we really. Um, is kind of at the top of our list. I mean, it's a, at the top of the list for a lot of people, but I think that, uh, you know, when you think about a small town, you don't think about, you know, the economic development so much. But economic development is really important for equity because it provides jobs and it provides a bigger tax base. Mm -hmm. And when you have a bigger tax base and your and your finances, your shitty finances are in better shape or you know, they are maintained in a better shape, right. that allows the city to do more equitable programs for youth. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm really, really um, interested in. Right. Uh, for instance, this uh, past summer, of uh, um, Tracy Tomaski, my co-chair for the Phoenix sure. Coalition, and I were talking about wouldn't it be great if we could give uh, scholarships or, or buy uh, pool passes for kids who are going between the sixth and seventh grade because there is some studies that show that, for instance, that's the year that most kids start smoking. Right, uh, right. That you know, start to experiment with tobacco, and it's a year that you lose a lot of kids. You lose a lot of kids between in the summer between the sixth and seventh grade, yeah. and so um, something as simple as uh, giving out pool passes to at-risk kids mm -hmm. would um, really um, um, kind of level the playing field for a lot of for a yeah. lot of youth. Yeah, and and there are a lot of great. Um, Parks and Rec is just a, a wonderful vehicle to sort of um, catch uh, kids. Yeah, it's it's a great safety net yeah. for our youth, and so um, that's why our, that's where I see the um, the connection between equity and economic development. And so I think that that is 
is um, really important. Yeah, and you're right that that year between sixth and seventh, when they're transitioning into what we have in, in Davis's mm -hmm. middle school, is uh, you know I've just raised three kids. It's a yes. critical. <laughs> it it's is a critical developmental um, point. Let, let's unpack economic development just a little bit though, because I think. What I've learned when talking to people about it, mm -hmm. they hear that and they think, oh, big box stores. And right. Davis, you know, we're not about big box stores, but it actually touches the community on a lot of different mm -hmm. levels. Can we talk about um, sure. some other ways that that sure. plays out? And so the, the biggest and most obvious is partnering with the university. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we're, we're just kind of working our way through negotiations with the university and their long range development plan. Right, that's been big news recently. And that is, mm -hmm. and that is big news. And I think that I'm very, very hopeful and it sounds like um, we are going to be able to promote uh, a good relationship building with the university and hopefully we can get through that process and come out of it with a stronger relationship and part of that relationship I'm hoping is is to be able to um, tap into the innovation that's there yeah and and be able to uh, have you know maybe if we can't get like a big research park like what they're doing in Sacramento, mm -hmm. we can get little incubators, um, spaces or, or places that the university can sort of explore um, ideas and then maybe go somewhere where there is more right. land um, or maybe we can take a look at what we have available and do some assessments mm -hmm. about, you know, what are our strengths in the city and where do we have space and where do we have interest yeah. and, and do some outreach around those areas. Well, research parks, since you brought it up, it's one of those issues that you know, has been talked about in, in Davis and there have been various iterations of it that have come forward and mm -hmm. really haven't materialized. Mm -hmm. I, I like this idea of smaller instead of, you know, looking at a big hole that we can't really, um, mm -hmm. you know, get get our, our brains around. Um, I'm thinking about the, the Nugget uh, mm -hmm. headquarters that mm -hmm. was approved last week and I read that there's some, a little bit of room for some research so maybe right. we can squeeze things in here and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the connection with the university of course, the, one of the big touchstones there is housing and the shortage of, of affordable mm -hmm. housing for students and therefore students taking up a lot of the other you know, right. rentals mm -hmm. in town. So I hope that that's something that um, we'll continue to work, work on. Mm -hmm. I, it, I, I attended UC Davis in the in mm -hmm. the late eighties, graduated from here, and it makes me sad to think about when I hear about students sleeping in cars right. or students who have really long commutes because they simply can't mm -hmm. afford to live here or even if they can, they can't find a place to live. Right. Because the vacancy rate is effectively right. you know, zero. Right. And I think that again, you know, that is something that we can't I, you know, I'm, we can't rely on the university to do right. completely, and I absolutely agree that they need to meet a, a percentage. Um, but it, the reality is that we are going to have to uh, tackle our housing shortage. Yeah. Or, you know, be that for students or be that for people who are here. Um, because, at, you know, as you say, you were a student at UC Davis. Mm -hmm. I was a student at UC Davis. I've had you know, children that have gone on to gone right. off to college, right. and one of the realities is that kids don't want to live on campus, mm -hmm. right? I mean, kids will live on campus for a couple of years, but it, sure. it's kind of a natural progression that they're going to want to yeah. go off they of want, campus. They want the freedom. They want and, the autonomy, yeah, absolutely. Exactly, yeah. um, and and it's frankly cheaper to live off of campus, and so. Um, that you know, regardless of how much the university builds, there you know we are going to have students that are going to live in the city. Yeah. So these are big issues we're talking about. Getting down mm -hmm. to the nitty gritty. I know that you you attended a lot of council meetings and you've been very involved in city life for a long mm -hmm. time. So I think that you know sitting up on the <laughs> dais is that's new, but it's not that different from mm -hmm. from you've you've been involved. Um, have you come across anything? Have you met anything that has really surprised you yet? Or have, have uh, also have you um, encountered an issue that is new to you that is now, you know, 
becoming more important to you? I, and I realize right. that's it's maybe an unfair question. Long. It hasn't been that long. <laughs> it hasn't been that long. <laughs> but no. what, what, what's your sense of the, the, the larger field so far? You know, um, I, you know, I really can't say because I, I really do still feel like I'm getting my feet under me. Um, I, you know, there's a ton of reading that has to happen. Right. And what is what is surprising to me is is the variety of things that you that you run across, and you know, you get a lot of emails. You get a ton of emails from citizens and from um, you know other entities that are uh, want you to pay attention right. to certain. Uh, topics or certain issues and sometimes that can be a little overwhelming because I want to be uh, you know I don't want to ignore anything and I want to make sure that I'm thorough and all right. of that um, so that has been a little surprising because I um, it, it's a lot to field yeah, and you can't right. be an expert on no. all topics. Right. And so I know I'm working with other council members over the years. I see that people, you know, kind of have their, their uh, the projects they feel the, the mm -hmm. most well versed in, mm -hmm. and then they have to. But you have to pay attention. You do. to so much when you're up there. You do. Yeah. Um, but what has surprised me about that is, um, and, and what I've appreciated, is that it has kind of um, opened my my view mm -hmm. more to you know because when you're doing whatever it is that you're doing you you see what's in front of you you get in your groove yeah, yeah you get your groove yeah and so you don't realize that there are you know just all these other issues that are that are here um and so that that has been that has been great so i i consider myself like a a, a learner yeah. I really, really am charged by you know learning about things and and figuring things out, and so um, I kind of feel like this is a, a perfect place for me, yeah. and so I'm really enjoying that part of it. Do you feel a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders? You are uh, Rochelle, of course, rolled off council. You are the only woman on yes. council. You are Latina. Yes. You are. We have not had a council member mm -hmm. like you before who came to the table with equity and inclusion as their their main, you know, tenets of, mm -hmm. of, of what you believe and what you want to move forward? Well, as I said in my acceptance, you know, it says a lot about our city. So, you know, right now in this, right now in the, in the time that we are, you're, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing Latinx children that are being used as a tool to close opportunity. And so I am so grateful to this community that has, um, has you know managed to to keep the doors open right. for opportunity, and I I just I think that it does say a lot about us. It says a, you know a lot about what our values are, and um, so yeah, it is. It does feel I do feel the weight of it, mm -hmm. um, but I also feel supported mm -hmm. in that endeavor because I know that you know that this is where my community stands yeah and so I did have like one lovely experience where I had this uh, Latina mom come you know over with her two daughters because uh, one of the daughters who was around 10 uh, wanted to meet me nice and so that was very validating so you're modeling that yeah, yeah. which is so that great. Was great and my daughter just started um, my daughter just started her first year of residency in mm -hmm. LA, and so she's kind of back in the neighborhoods that we grew up in, right. and uh, or that I grew up in, and that's where my kids were at. And she says that um, whenever she sees like a young teenage single mom come in, that she looks at her and she says, "You know, you could be mayor one day." <laughs> so that Excellent. is like that's like really it. It warms my heart. That's very yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm confident that you're up to the task and, and more. Yeah. And I think we're very fortunate to, to have you here mm -hmm. as, a, as an elected council member and Mayor Pro Tem. So yeah. thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And thanks for making time to come in and chat with us today. As okay. I said earlier, um, the door will be open and we will okay. have you back. 
and uh, you know, happy to talk about single issues or just check in and see how it's going from time okay, to time. Okay, I look forward to that. Great. That's Thanks great. so much, Gloria. Okay. All, All right. right. And thank you for tuning in. You've been watching The City Considers here on Davis Media Access. This is a program that airs uh, on Tuesday evenings at 6.15 p.m. right before council meetings. You can also find it online at dctv.davismedia.org or on our YouTube channel. And thanks for tuning in.